This is part two of the Game Boy Mega Machine vlogging things. And yeah, uh, it's been quite a, uh, quite a journey. There's been a few mistakes that I've had to iron out, but with every problem comes a reward. But with every reward comes another problem. So let's have a look at what we found out, shall we? So this is test streak number three. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look much different to the other ones except they're on lovely panels. These are actually going to end up in the synthesizer itself, just like this. I've made a fair few of them, just um, exactly the same, but we'll have a look at those later. Basically, what I needed to do this last couple of weeks was kind of work out exactly what the Game Boys needed to do and how they needed to talk to the rest of the machine. Hence it not being very much done yet because I don't want to build them all and then realise I've got to modify them because I've made a mistake or I want to add more features. So let's have a look at what's going on around the back of here. Let's go and do some drawing, shall we? So this is the completed module that it needs to be built 50 times. Basically, it's a Game Boy with a few bits of circuit that are broken out to make it, you know, sort of um, talk to everything that it needs to talk to. It's got a contrast, it's got an on and off when it seems to crash, sometimes that happens, a mute, a couple of status displays, as well as a lovely paint job. And this is all backlit, and let's have a look at the back. So the back of the Game Boy is on there, it's actually being spruced up by a couple of standoffs and then there's a load of wires coming from here there's a picture here that I put up on Instagram of what wires were coming off but now we're going to talk about why is this like this well let's have a look shall we so we've got a Game Boy Woo! lovely draw a Game Boy I'm not very good at drawing Game Boys I always draw them backwards uh, uh. So we've got the Game Boy. What needs to be controlled? Well, the panel control, we've got the contrast. And that's basically just taking the potentiometer from the side that's really hard to reach and making it into a very easy to see contrast screen. It's got an on and off button that actually cuts out a load of other things because you can't have it off with just the power because it will crash the rest of the Game Boys. You need to cut out some certain other things. It's got a mute button, so you're able to turn off, so you can check everything else and then turn it on and tune it and whatnot. And it's got a couple of status things that are actually broken out from the um, Game Boy cartridge that kind of flash in time with certain things. The thing about this is this Game Boy needs to talk to the Game Boys next to it and also above and below it. So we need to make loads of different buses behind it that they all plug into. This is where it starts to get complicated because what you need for going sideways is the, the Arduino boy for, for this certain Game Boy is coming from here. There's two wires coming from the Arduino boy, which is basically the MIDI interface. It's going from the keyboard. So there's a keyboard here. Oh, that's a dreadful keyboard. Woo, woo. Woo! Smiley face on the keyboard, that's me playing the keyboard. And um, basically that is firing out MIDI commands to tell the Game Boy which note to play. And that's coming from here because this needs to play the same commands and notes as the one next to it. But it needs to play different ones to the ones in the other columns because these are other notes in the polyphonic kind of synthesizer thingamajiggy. Also going across is the power. So I need the five volts in the ground. 5 volts to power it, ground to things, so that's already 4 wires that need to be connected on the bus. And then initially, I was going to add the audio out, because the audio needs to keep on going across until you get to the low pass filter, which is here, and also the voltage controlled amplifier and the uh, tube distortion. This is all on the same voice. But a problem with that, having it in the same bus, is I found that it was making sounds from all of the uh, digital kind of signals, so it was going like <laughs> So I annoyingly, I had to make this its own bus. So there's a two pin bus, there's a four pin bus. The other thing that goes on this bus is also four wires that control the cartridges, because the cartridges need to all be in sync. I'm using these kitsch bent cartridges and what these are are basically 16 ROMs that you can select with these switches but in order to be all on the same game or ROM or synthesizer program they all need to be in sync so this wire is connected to all of them so they're all connected up together so they're all in sync so you can turn this Game Boy machine off flick a button turn it back on again and it will turn over to the next 
Game Boy program, so they're all in sync with it. Anyway, you can get these from Kitchbent if you're interested. They don't have save files, which is fine for me right now, but you know, it's very useful and really cheap cartridges. You can check them out. The other thing is, to make this more complicated, is the Game Boy needs to talk to all the Game Boys going down from it because this is the same Game Boy in the, each of the voices. We want to be able to play a polyphonic synthesizer so they're all basically, you know, you're not, you're not having to control each of them separately. When you're playing it, it doesn't sound like there's different synths, there's just six identical voices. Problem with that is, you need a bus going up and down. So, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight wires that are selecting all of the buttons. There's the strip board layout for this in the last week's vlog about this machine. The other thing is, is it's not just this, there's also the modulation, which is gonna modulate, which we spoke about last time, it's gonna modulate the CPU so you can add vibrato and frequency modulation. But you need to be able to turn this on and off as well. So you need a CPU engage. So that's 10 wires all on one bus. We're gonna go and look at this in the real world. If this is a confusing, well, hopefully it'll start making sense when we go over to the test rig. Woo! What did all that jargon mean? Well, it basically means there's gonna be a load of wires behind all the Game Boys. If you can see here, yeah, you can see there's a lot of uh, wires dangling around. Each Game Boy module has four sets of wires or looms of wires coming from it. We've got one that's gonna go up to the actual cabinets above and below and that's we'll look at that later because there's not actually a bus board for that yet and then we've got another one which is going to go along the game boys and that is this bus board right here using a 10 loom cable that's going to wire up to the bus so all of these are connected together in all of the game boys Woo! then there's another one you're forgetting about the backlight of the game boy each of these backlights are going to be separately controllable. So I'm going to be able to make him, you know, like do Vegas mode or fancy effects where one light turns on. You know, be able to turn it into like a 6x8 pixel screen in a way, using the Game Boys as pixels. So each of those need to be connected to this bus board, which uh, makes it complicated. Then you go over here. These were initially in that bus board, but the audio requires its own connections to be isolated from the digital circuit because it was making too much noise. So that's another bus board. Oh my God, how many bus boards do we need? And then there's another one over here, which is controlling all of the analog voltages, but that's for the case above. This is just uh, the test rig that we're looking at. But as you can see, most of my time was spent making wires. So what's on the front? Well, there's two different types of modules here. We've got the Game Boy modules, and next to them, we've got the ones that are actually gonna be in the cases above, called the CPU modulators. What these are, are basically the LTC1799 chips that we were using last time to modulate the CPUs in here, but broken out so they mix in extra voltages from um, different LFOs and FM things and stuff like that so you can control vibrato as well as the overall tune and stuff like octave and all that. You're able to engage these separately so if you engage them and then it will slow this Game Boy down, speed it up. Don't know whether you're going to see that but we'll have a closer look. So you're able to slow it down and speed it up. This is also, you can put a trigger in to trigger it on and off whenever you want it to, as well as being able to control two separate control voltages in, which are actually addressable via the back bus. So all of these are gonna be in sync, but there's gonna be eight of these overall, so there's gonna be twice as much as this for each voice. So let's have a listen to what it sounds like so far. Okay, so I'm gonna turn these on one by one, and they're gonna be playing exactly the same thing, but then we're gonna start adding things and see how fat we could get it sounded. So I'm gonna turn the mute one off this one first. You know, it just sounds like a riff. And I'm gonna plug another one in. It'll just sound the same, maybe louder or quieter. Let's engage the CPU modulators.
idea. It sort of starting to sound a little bit fatter, which is what I'm trying to get, because there's no point having a load of oscillators if they're all in tune with each other. You've got to kind of make them sound and slightly out of tune with each other and modulate to make them, you know, worthwhile in having. So the next step that I need to do, I'm going to make the case, which is pretty damn big. It's requiring a lot of wood. It's going to be about three meters tall and about two and a half meters wide. It's quite a machine. The next thing after that is I need to make something to control all of these. I'm going to be adding presets to add presets to control all of the Game Boys and MGB, which is what is running, which is made by Trash80, which talks to this Arduino boy, which is a load of other things all entirely. After that, I've got a load of stuff to do, including making polyphonic envelopes, polyphonic filters, polyphonic VCAs, you name it. So yeah, I hope that was of interest. If you're interested to see how this goes, go and check out my Instagram stories. Thank you very much to the kind supporters on my Patreon because this project is definitely a Patreon kind of funded thing because it's quite a crazy thing that I probably wouldn't be able to do if it wasn't for Patreon. So thank you very much. And for that, there's builders live streams that I, that I do live streams talking about building this and whilst I'm building it over there as well as more frequent vlogs. So if you're interested in that, go and check that out, please. That's a link in the description as well. Cosmo has been moaning about not getting enough airtime on this channel, so he's gonna get his own part at the end of the videos. Anyway, over to him. The Game Boy came out in 1989 and it beats its rivals, the Atari Lux and Sega Game Gear, which were both way better. But the Game Boy had 30 hours battery life and was way cheaper. Even the Soviet cosmonaut Serebrov took his Game Boy to space. Why get the most unique, breathtaking view of the Earth when you could just play Tetris, huh? <laughs> anyway, Sam's got me at gunpoint, so don't be scared to try it and subscribe, you now. Anyway, see you later. I'm Cosmo. Lots of love, peace out, and bye. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,